Tonight, our Denver 7 investigators have been looking at public money being paid to polygraph operators. And that is raising alarms and claims of a serious conflict of interest. Chief investigative reporter Tony Kowaleski started digging into this more than nine months ago. Now we're talking about more than a million dollars in public money. And here's where it gets interesting. The accusations from credible observers are strong. Too many polygraphs, too little oversight, throwing away money to create an appearance. The state is managing sex offenders and making you safe. Mr. Jenks. Hi, how are you? Tony Kowaleski yeah, from Denver 7. He's one of the state's most successful and powerful polygraph examiners. I want to see if I can get you to commit to an on-camera interview. He helps shape policy. They're going to test those three areas again, all three together. On the state's sex offender management board. He leads the polygraph subcommittee, but he doesn't want to answer questions regarding a potential conflict of interest. But because I'm on that board, I'm going to say no. Some are saying the fox is running the hen house and your business is the fox. Well, then you probably need to talk to different people. And we have. I think Mr. Jenks has a conflict of interest. He's a respected retired judge. I objected to Mr. Jenks chairing the committee because of the appearance of impropriety. He's the chairman of the SOMB polygraph committee. That's the fox guarding the hen house. She's a veteran attorney. She's filed lawsuits against Jeff Jenks. There's a clear presumption of a conflict of interest that needs to be investigated. If they found out you were doing this interview, what would happen? Go to prison. And she's a convicted sex offender required to take regular polygraphs. And you're risking all of that. Why? because I want things to change. It's not a good system. Strong criticisms from a retired judge, a respected attorney, and a convicted sex offender, all pointing to failures in how the state of Colorado currently uses polygraphs. I think it's very profitable for polygraphers. I feel that people are making money. Um, it's an industry. In fact, records requested by Denver 7 show since 2010, more than $5 million in public money has been spent on polygraphs, with more money going to Mr. Jenks' business than any other polygraph company operating in the state. Let me get you hooked up here. In the last two fiscal years, Jenks' polygraph company has billed the Department of Corrections nearly $600,000. He's also billed state probation departments more than $150,000. His one company has received 35% of all public money paid for polygraphs in those two years. I think it should be offensive to every taxpayer. To start off, I just want you to tell me... And there are also questions about Mr. Jenks using semantics, bending rules to increase productivity and his bottom line. That concludes the test. You're saying this video proves he's not following regulations. Right. She's talking about this regulation written and voted on by Jeff Jenks, saying... Each examination shall be scheduled for a minimum of 90 minutes in duration. She interprets that to mean polygraphs must last 90 minutes. All of these polygraphs are substantially shorter than 90 minutes, some of them even shorter than an hour. Ruttenberg provided five videos she obtained for clients from Jenks. Denver 7 reviewed all five videos and found they were all less than 90 minutes in length. In this lawsuit, Ruttenberg essentially accused Jenks and his business of malpractice for failing to follow state standards, a lawsuit later dismissed on a technicality. There are so many red flags, there needs to be an independent investigation. How can Colorado taxpayers be assured that Mr. Jenks is acting in the best interest of the state and not his bottom line? Um, you ask good questions, Tony. He's the director of Colorado's Division of Criminal Justice. I have not seen that as a conflict of interest. Mr. Jenks is part of a larger decision-making group. He's one out of 25. The board Jenks sits on is under his purview, and he says it's now up to the board to interpret whether polygraphs can last less than 90 minutes. Based upon our reporting, what will you do? Well, if that, um, if that links together, we would obviously be taking a look at that. As you sit there, does that concern you? Um, it certainly has raised a lot of questions. Questions we were hoping Mr. Jenks would answer. All your tests go 90 minutes no. or more? No, some don't take that long. Okay. But is, isn't, isn't there a standard that all should be 90 minutes no. at least? The standard is a schedule for 90 minutes. Now. Can you explain to people at home why you sit on the board and more money from the state comes to your business has than, than anybody else? Board. I didn't request to be on the board. But according to his application, Jenks nominated himself to sit as the only legally required polygraph examiner on the board, a fact 
confirmed by the state. I wish you would reconsider and sit down and talk with us. We, we only asked for 15 minutes. You know, Mr. Jenks, this doesn't look good. If, if you have nothing to hide, why not sit in front of our camera and answer our questions? Because I know how you work. You're going to take everything I say. I already told you. It, sir, I'm a credible journalist. Have a good day, Tony. I hope you'll change your mind, sir. And there are a lot of people raising questions about the polygraph program overall, and a lot of other people who support it say it helps sex offenders turn their lives around in conjunction with other therapy. And I assure you, we will continue to investigate.